Hi, this is Nilton from craftofprogramming.com and in this video I'm going to cover the usage of Git in IntelliJ IDEA version 2019.1. I'm assuming that you are familiar with Git, in particular that you know the concepts of the Git object model, Git blob, you know the differences between a Git fetch and Git pull, the difference between a Git merge and Git rebase, as well as the concepts of uh, working, staging area, the local repo, remote repo, and so on. Let's get started. Hi, so before we get started, I'd just like to ask you, if you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel. And also at the end of the video, please consider give it a thumbs up if you found it useful. Also leave a comment below on ways to, and suggestions and ways to improve this video moving forward. Let's go. I have here a very simple project uh, that's under version control under Git and Git is being hosted in GitHub. And um, all of the operations in Git are accessible. I mean, you can go to obviously the, ma the main menu and here you have all the operations uh, that Git supports, but you know, I prefer to work with this uh, pop-up, which is uh, control shift backtick in Windows. And the nice thing about it is that, you know, it's focused. I know here I can quickly switch from one branch to the other. I can create a branch or a tag. And the other menu is Alt Backtick in Windows. And in here I have, you know, a bit more operations, pushes and stash changes and so on. You have the editor here and then when you click on Alt 9, then you have the um, version control window. And essentially you have a few tabs here. The first tab is where your local changes are going to be to appear. So if I make a change uh, to this file, you know, foo, blah, 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 then you see, and I go here, then you see that this file is, um, has been added to the this default change list. And if you do control D, then I know the change, okay? Uh, on this version uh, control um, tool window, there is the log. This log is basically all of the changes done, your uh, entire repo. D if you look at the uh, status bar here, you can see the branch that you are on currently. So see git master, this is where you are at the moment. So you can just come here, select a specific commit and do control D and you see the change um, you know, in that commit you can compare with the previous version or you can select separate commits here and just compare them. For example, you do that and then you do control D to compare. Another thing that you can see here is uh, you can filter things. So you can filter by branches. Um, at the moment, I'm looking at all the changes in my local repo, but I can just focus on, for example, just changes done on master or by a, specifically a specific user. Um, also, you can filter by the range of dates, a specific date or a range, or, uh, or a specific path. Another thing that this shows you is the, um, the prefix of the hash, the user that commit the change, and the date. And it, it shows you where on which branches this change is currently on. So let's exemplify the um, typical workflow. First thing I need to do is I need to create my branch. So again, I go to the pop-up, I do a branch, uh, select create new branch and I give it a name. Let's call it feature, I don't know, feature three, because I already have feature one and two. So I create that and I notice that this has already changed. Uh, I see feature three here. So I'm, I am on, 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 on a different branch. And um, so now let's make my change. Um, I know, let's just make a simple things here. Let's extract this path. Okay, so the first change we have, let's commit. So when you're ready to commit, you just do control K in Windows and you have a comment, um, make something sensible. And in the commit window, you can uh, select all of these options to reformat code, rearrange, optimize, import, clean up, and so on. This is good practice, so, so do it. And you're done. So just click commit. So it has been committed. And if you look at the um, version control window, log, 
then you see that this change has been committed okay and again if you do control D you can look at the nature of the channel of the change okay and notice one important thing is that this change is not on remote yet as a matter of fact there is no remote branch uh, for this local um, branch so now that I made my change I I'm going to push this change to the remote it was gonna give me this dialog have an option to review the changes and I'm going to push okay push successfully and notice that it says to a new branch origin feature so this actually this push actually did two things it first created the um, branch on the, on origin and then it committed the uh, changes added these changes onto the origin so this will be a basic uh, workflow how you would do things you know you make a change you uh, review the change and you commit it and then you push it another thing that you can do is um, let's say that you are working on a you join um, a you start you working on a feature that for which there is already a developer working on so in this case you're not going to obviously create a new remote feature branch you're going to create a local feature branch that's going to track that remote branch so the way you do it is again you come here to the git branch and you pick a feature for example uh, feature 1 and you do a checkout as and then you give it the name of your feature branch so one thing I can do is while I'm working here I can compare the changes across different branches so if I go to git and I do compare with branch and I can select a, 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 a branch so I can compare with origin or the local, let's compare with the um, origin. So I'm comparing the um, feature 1 branch with feature 3 origin and you can see the differences. So typically what happens is you are working on your feature branch and changes are merged to the develop slash master branch and uh, at which point you have to get those changes onto your feature branch. Because remember the goal is to keep your feature branch current with uh, develop slash master so that when you're ready to issue the pull request to master the delta should only be your uh, feature branch changes so let's exemplify here um, a change let me go to master so it already exists so let's just switch to master let's get all the changes from the remote all the files are up to date so now let's um, I mean typically you would you would not directly change master but what I want to demonstrate here is a scenario whereby a, a change from another feature branch or a bug fix from a release branch has been merged onto master. So let's make it uh, two scenarios. One, a change that there is no conflict and one that there is conflict. So let's extract here a method. Yes, let's call it get book. So now we have this change. If you go to Alt 9 and you look, you see the change, you can review the change and see the nature of the, the actual change. And now let me commit uh, this change. So let me commit the change. So let's commit this change. Let's push. So I'm pushing the change to the remote master. Okay, now let me switch to my um, feature branch. So now there are basically three uh, ways that you can bring those changes from master onto your feature branch. You can do a merge, or you can do a rebase, or you can do a cherry pick. We're gonna cover those three options. But the key difference between when to choose between a merge or a rebase is, it really comes down to whether you are working on this feature branch on your own. I mean, if you are sharing this feature branch with another developer, just don't do rebase. Because if you do rebase rewrites the history, and um, you don't want to be doing that if you are sharing this branch with someone else. So let's exemplify um, using a, um, a merge, okay? So what I do is I select, I go here to my uh, git branch window, I select the branch that I want to get the changes from, master, and I do merge into current, okay? So this was a trivial merge because the, the there were no merge conflicts right if you look in the um, log window then you can see that a new merge commit was created which is this one here and it's appropriately 
um, you know, with the appropriate command, merge branch, branch master into feature three. And if I look at the diff, then I see that this uh, merge commit um, represents the changes um, from master as well as the changes from my feature branch. So that's one thing you can do. Okay, so another way that I can bring a change from the master branch or another branch for that matter is to do a rebase. So for now, let me to demonstrate that let's um, let's get rid of that merge um, commit. So let's just do a reset and let's do hard. <laughs> Be careful in doing that, but it's fine for this example. So we got rid of that um, merge commit and. So you would do f to do a, uh, to rebase the current branch onto the master branch. You basically select the master branch and you select this option: rebase current onto select. Remember, rebase rewrites history. So if this is a branch that you are sharing with someone else, be very careful. Probably shouldn't do a rebase. So just to rebase current onto selected, and notice that I did get the change. Um, and one simple way to check is just let's compare my feature branch with master and notice that the only change are the changes on my feature branch. O moreover, if you look at the uh, logs here, notice that uh, unlike the merge, there is no merge com commit when I do a rebase. There is a third way to bring in changes from another branch, which is called cherry pick a um, subset of uh, changes onto my current branch. So what I do is um, I select the commit that I want to cherry pick or set of commits. So in this case, this, this is the one. And I click cherry pick here. And in here, the nice thing about cherry pick is that I can just uncheck this, for example, and I just do commit. So notice that I am selecting, instead of getting all the changes like a merge or a rebase would do, here I can cherry pick changes that I want. I just want to change and book the AO. I don't want all the changes on this commit. And I do commit. Let's just click commit. Okay, so the previous example was relatively straightforward in that when we uh, merged the changes from master, there were no merge conflicts. So now let's exemplify perhaps a more realistic example where um, the changes you are pulling from master are actually cause a merge conflict or a rebase conflict. So let me extract here a method that I'll call get path. Let's commit this change. And now let me rebase from um, master. So as you can see, um, Git prompts me for a um, if there is a merge conflict and Git does not cannot automatically merge the changes from two branches, then you are prompt, you know, with this conflict window, and you basically have three options. You can accept uh, if this accept yours means that you are uh, ignoring the changes from the other branch. Accept theirs is the opposite; you are ignoring uh, your own changes and merge, which is the you know most common option, is the one that you select. And then you are given this merge revisions window where on the um, left side is your um, branch changes. On the right side is the changes from the source, the branch. And the middle one is the result of the merge. So after we apply all of these changes manually, IntelliJ uh, tells you that all changes have been processed and you click apply. One other thing I'd like to show you is how to manage local changes. So let's say, for example, that I am happily working here and um, I don't know, let's say I'll, I'm, I'm going to run another query. Now I'm working on this and then I've decided to, for whatever reason that, you know, I want to switch to something else. So what you do is you go here and what you can do is you can just select uh, shelf changes and you shelf those changes. So notice that after I shelf the changes, the changes were removed from my local changes.
and in the logs I don't see anything because I didn't actually commit. If I want to retrieve that change then I just basically come here and right click and do um, unshelf. One other thing I want to show you is the annotation. So you just click annotate and you have on the gutter here uh, basically the commit hash, who changed it and when. So now what I'd like to show you is um, basically how to revert changes. So sometimes you make a change and you want to revert it for whatever reason. So let's say I just make a change here, foo. If I look here, then I see my change. And because this change has not been committed yet, then I can just right click and do revert. Okay, and I have to revert the change, notice that the change is gone. However, if this change is actually committed, okay, I commit this change. In this case, you come to the log window, you select the, com the commit, you right click, and you do undo commit. Okay, and when you do that, you go to the local change and you see your change there again as a local change. So let's commit this again. And now let's push this change to the upstream. So now that these changes are on upstream, the only way to remove them is to revert commit. So you'd select commit, you do um, revert commit. One uh, other thing I'd like to show you is how to, um, you know, basically um, undo changes that you have made. And uh, let's say I made a change here to this file. I just had a bar comment. Let's commit this change. Add a bar comment. Let's commit. And I just changed my mind. I don't want that. So what you can do is you come to the um, to the log uh, tab and you select the first commit that you want to keep. So you right click and you do reset current branch to here. When you do this, you prompt with these four options and the, you know, the options will, that you choose will depend on exactly, uh, you know, what you are trying to undo. The safest option is soft. Soft essentially resets the current branch to, to that point without changing your files. Mixed is similar to soft, but it just doesn't uh, stage the changes. So the difference between these two changes and the hard and keep, how both hard and keep will basically actually revert to changes. You're gonna actually lose the changes. The first one, which is simplest case, is just a soft reset. And you do a soft reset. And if you look, go to the local changes, you will see here that your change is still here, okay? So conversely, if I want to do a, um, you know, I want to get rid of this um, change, I just do a hard reset. Um, so you just do a reset and you go to this, to this um, uh, commit and, you know, there are no local changes, everything is gone. Now let's add a full comment. So now I have a full comment. If I go to local change, I see my full comment here. And let me go to the console, select this path and do a um, reset current branch to here. If I do keep, what's going to happen is bar comment is going to get be removed because it's after this, uh, it's a commit that is made after this point. But my local changes will be kept. So let's do this, reset, do a smart reset. And notice that this option is, go is lost, but my full change has been preserved here. So one last feature I'd like to show you is how to squash commits. Let's say I want to squash all of these three commits. So what I do is I pick the first commit in the history of the oldest commit, right? I right click and I do interactively, interactively rebase from here. And then I have here these options to pick, to edit, to skip, squash, reward or fix up. Typically you would pick the first one and then the subsequent ones you would squash them. So essentially this will create um, this will uh, squash all of these three commits onto one and you will have the option to reward the message. Click start rebasing and then here you have the option to change the um, commit messages. So I'll just change, you know, added Java doc and this will be my single commit. And there you go. So everything, all of those three commits were squashed into a single commit. Okay, so this concludes the uh, introduction to Git in IntelliJ. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.